All right. Hi, this is Thomas with Believe in the Run. And this is Megan with Believe in the Run. And today we were with Sarah, Sarah Hall. Hall. <laughs> this is exciting for us. We're a big fan of your husband's. We're a big fan of yours. We've spoken to your husband before. I don't know if you knew this, but he's been on our podcast. <laughs> So we tried to get details on you, but he's pretty, he's pretty tight lipped. <laughs> That's great. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So we were thinking about some of the things that you were saying inside. So you were talking about all the accomplishments you've had. You've had some ups and downs. And one thing I think all athletes struggle with are recovering from times where maybe it didn't go the way they wanted it to. What advice would you give athletes on kind of shrugging off a less than exciting finish? and rebuilding and coming back strong. Yeah, I would say that resiliency is, is it's a muscle, you know, like it gets stronger the more you fail and, and pick yourself back up. I think for me, I just had like so many failures that I kind of stopped being scared of failure anymore. And I stopped actually, um, I wasn't as hard on myself after them. I think like for me, the way I do it is like I wake up the next day and I ha drink like a bunch of strong coffee. <laughs> and then if it wasn't a marathon, like I'll go like hammer a run and like, you know, obviously you can't do that after the day after a marathon, but, um, and you just remember like why you love the sport, you know, and it, it doesn't have to do with always the racing. Like you just love running, you just love pushing yourself and seeing your limits and all of that. And so for me, I, and then I just start dreaming of what's next, you know, like for me picking a new goal and, um, just setting my sights on that just refocuses me and, and gets me excited about that. So, so that's my way of doing it. But yeah, I would just encourage you that like, um, yeah, there's always more races and it, you know, it gets easier the more you do that. <laughs> as you've been training throughout all these years, is there anything that you you've learned specifically or as you've gotten older that you've had to adjust in your training? Yeah, not yet. Um I mean, I would say my body's handling like the training better than it ever has. Um some of that I would I would um attribute to shoe technology, like not just the racing shoes, which obviously like the bouncy foam from those like definitely saves your legs but also the training shoes like I love the Asics Nova Blast and like to me that was like a game changer for me in my marathon training like how I handle the volume in these shoes actually is like it just beats my legs up way less so I can I can get that aerobic capacity like building that um, without as much of like the toll on my legs. So, so yeah, I would say the, the A6 Nova Blast was a big game changer. And, and so as a result of that, I haven't needed necessarily to change anything because of my age or anything. <laughs> That's incredible. So basically recovering faster because you have more cushioning and just a better shoe underfoot. Yeah. I think like just more responsive shoe that, um, I don't know for me just, yeah, just how, like, I think a lot of it is just the pounding handling, the mar like doing marathon training that's kind of the limiter is like how much can you pound like how much aerobic capacity can you build while your body can absorb the pounding you know it's kind of like the sweet spot of like how much training you can handle for the marathon so for me to be able to keep like building and building that with less pounding is helpful <laughs> so as long as we're talking about shoes yeah i figured you're gonna ask <laughs> go ahead you. what's gonna be on your feet on monday Oh, I'll be wearing the Metaspeed uh, Sky out there. Sky and, Plus? Uh, just the Sky. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I, I just have more experience running in that one. And so, yeah, I, I have set the American record in the half in that. So, <laughs> got to just go with that, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it seems to work well. <laughs> now, we just talked about as you get older, training and stuff that, like that. Now, your daughter Mia is coming up in the sport. And there's a lot of young people coming into the sport. Is there advice you have for them as they're going in? One, dealing with like ups and downs of racing, and two, just how to get your mind right to be at a place where you could be a champion like yourself? Yeah, you know, I, I kind of, um, I balance like, te like teaching them things with also just letting them learn through experience. You know, I think I had a lot of freedom at her age to like, even in training, like no one was, I had a lot of freedom to go run three hour long runs if I wanted to or things like I kind of like, just and I, I think that there's a value to that whereas Ryan came from a like his parents were, his dad was his coach so it was very like dialed in and like you know and so I think we're some I think we we kind of try for somewhere in the middle um obviously I, I think I just try to teach her more things of like just enjoying having nothing to lose like running and racing in a way that makes her excited you know instead of giving her like you should do this for your race plan like I'm like I ask her I'm like hey how would like what would make you the most excited out there in the race, you know? And then she'll, she'll think about that and say 
how she feels most excited to run. And it's like, all right, well, you do that, you know, versus like, hey, I think you should go on this pace or something. So um, so that's more my strategy. And I think they, they mostly learn things from me through just watching me. You know, like with kids, like they learn – uh, more is caught than taught with them, you know, so they're just like absorbing it just from seeing what I do like day to day. Two, so. two uh, fantastic parents. I mean, <laughs> you got an example, like it's just fun watching Ryan's transformation. But besides that, I'll say one of my personal favorite moments in sport was the end of the London Marathon. It's a rainy, cold day. You're doing loops. It's the middle of COVID. <laughs> And there you come. I don't know where it came from. It was like a possessed <laughs> thing. I mean, did it, in your mind, did something just click? Like, what happened there? Yeah. Um, you know, I think that that race, yeah, like you said, it was all those things. It was also for me coming off the heels of the biggest disappointment of my career, like not making the Olympic marathon team. And then, as I said, like, usually I just refocus into the next race. And so, but that was the only time you couldn't do that because then all the races were canceled. So for me, like, it, it took a lot of inter- intrinsic motivation to get to that, to like, I was training for that race even before I knew there was a race, just like in faith that there'd be an opportunity. And then um, to actually have that opportunity and, and have it be really difficult out there. It was completely silent. I was running by myself. And, but I felt really good still. And I had to just really focus on gratitude to get me through that those most of that race because I was like this is the worst case scenario I'm it's like completely quiet out here and I'm running alone I'm just like listening to my breathing and but um gratitude really like kept me in that race and and just telling myself that they were going to come back to me and then when they did like I just I started building a lot of momentum chasing and um and I think yeah when you realize you have an opportunity to get like second in the London Marathon you do get that (laughs) possessed like um yeah it was it was it was the the highlight of my career so far. For Do you sure. watch it back yourself? I don't intentionally, but people tag me in it like every <laughs> other day. And so I still like so, sometimes I'll watch it when they tag me and it's it's fun. I mean, yeah. It gives me chills. Um, now you're going to be racing with a teammate and Kira D'Amato. So the teammate would be Emma Bates and Kira D'Amato. Do you think that you're going to want to work with them in the marathon or are you going to do a solo? Like I'm just doing my plan and going with my plan or is it... Like, hey, we can kind of work this together. Yeah, I haven't talked to them about it yet, but um, I would like to. I think that I definitely see, like, this being somewhat of a team race, even though running is, like, an individual sport and you have to do run your own best race. But, like, but I would love to work with them out there, and I think that um, that can help us each have our own individually our best races. Are you going to get a chance to meet with them before the race? Yeah, I think we'll see each other. I just got into town, so, yeah. <laughs> That's right. All the way from altitude. We talked about that a little bit. Yeah. So we're two days out, I think, right from the race. So what, what do what do the the next couple of days look like for you? Oh, um, I'll be getting some some therapy. Just get my body tuned up. Just resting. I'll be hanging out with my kids some. Um, I'd like to get into the stadium at some point. Uh, I and just like see the atmosphere in there. But um, other than that, I mean, just eating a lot of carbs. That's <laughs> awesome. And All so, right. what are you what are you most excited for for Monday? Oh, I'm excited to just experience a crowd out there. Like my last, um, Tokyo was like, they weren't really allowing spectators that much. So my last one was Chicago where the crowd just blew me away. Like I totally exceeded my expectations of the support out there. So I'm really hopeful that it'll be like this because it's another hometown race. So yeah, we got to spectate at Chicago and it was fun. Yeah. It was like the welcome back marathon of like crowds. So good. Yeah. <laughs> well, we don't want to take up too much of your time because we know Every little bit of energy we want you to save for Monday. But yep. we really appreciate being able to talk to you. And uh, thank you so much. Thank yep. you guys. Thanks. <laughs>